bonjour mes amis. It's 2017, 2017. Wow, that's pretty amazing. From what I hear, it's going to be the year of the intelligent assistant. When AI becomes like the real deal. I know some of you have already got your Alexas and some of you have already got your little Google Home thingies. I can't buy either one up here in Canada at the moment, but from what I understand, I'll be able to get a Google Home very shortly over at the Best Buy. But while I wait, I've got this, I've got this. This is a Raspberry Pi, I'm sure you know that. And it's got a little Wi-Fi card sitting here. There we go, a little USB Wi-Fi card on the end. And I've also got this sound card that I picked up off Amazon. This is like a surround sound card. And it's got ports for microphones and for speakers. And what I plan on doing with this thing is building my own Jarvis. Well, not quite exactly in the same way that uh, Mark Zuckerberg did for his house. But uh, I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to make my own version of Jarvis uh, using one of the uh, AI projects that's sitting out there. I haven't quite decided which one yet. Maybe uh, in the next episode we'll do that. Anyway, or in a future episode, I should say. But nevertheless, today we're going to talk about AI, artificial intelligence. And we're going to go back and take a look at, uh, you know, uh, artificial intelligence on the Linux desktop. So, um... Why don't you go into the restaurant, have Francois sit you down, and uh, we'll do this in just a couple of minutes, okay? See you soon, and uh, à votre santé. So once upon a time, a long time ago, there was a little program called ELIZA, which was kind of the original artificial intelligence program. Now, ELIZA was meant to be, uh, you know, like a therapist. You sat down and chatted with your therapist. And of course, ELIZA is based on George Bernard Shaw's ELIZA, you know, from the show Pygmalion. You know, Pygmalion, My Fair Lady. What? You don't know what My Fair Lady is or Pygmalion or do, do you even know who George Bernard Shaw is? Okay, we need to rectify this before we continue. You mean you could make me? Yes, you squashed cabbage leaf. You disgraced the noble architecture of these columns. You incarnate insult of the English language. I could pass you off as the Queen of Sheba. <laughs> yeah. You don't believe that, do you, Captain? Well, everything is possible. Now, if you haven't seen George Bernard Shaw's Pygmalion, starring the incomparable Leslie Howard and Wendy Hiller, you're, you're missing out, you, and, and you need to go and rectify this immediately. Pour yourself a nice glass of wine, look for it on YouTube, it's also public domain, I downloaded this copy off archive.org. You need to watch this show so that you can understand what we're talking about here, all right? Because Eliza is an important character in uh, this particular issue of Cooking with Linux. So, go on, do that. I'll wait for you here, okay? Just press pause. I'll be here waiting for you. Just go now. All right, now that you understand Eliza, all right? So, Eliza, the computer program, was named after the character in Pygmalion, and it was an exercise in human response and natural language communication with so-called machine intelligence. We're not talking about Deep Blue here or Google's uh, AI machine, that uh, deep learning system that went out and, uh, you know, beat the world's Go players or anything like that. Now, this is the sort of thing that I played with like a million years ago, back when I had a TRS-80. Let me show you how it works. So, we've got Liz. I mean, it could be Eliza, but I'll, sh I'll show you how you change all this a little bit later. Later, okay please tell me what's bothering you um i i am I, I feel strange about talking to a computer i i know that's not really true because nowadays you know we all talk to our ais on our phones right do computers worry you computers worry me a great deal what about machines worries you i am afraid that they will take over the world. It's because you're afraid that they will take over the world that you came to me. Yes, that's the reason I'm talking to you now. Yes, that's why I am talking to you. Why don't you tell me a little bit more about this? You're the machine. You figure it out. Do computers worry you? Hey, wait a minute. This is starting to sound like... This is starting to sound like circular logic. Could there really be some connection? Yes and no. I see. No. No. All right. No, you don't. 
<laughs> yes, it does. There you go. Please tell me more about this. Anyway, so you're getting the idea. This is this is Eliza, okay? Now, like I said, this program goes back a long way. This is like this is like good grief. This is back in the 1960s. A guy named Professor Joseph Weizenbaum at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology uh, first created this program. You know, this computerized psychiatrist. Let me show you how you can make your own, okay, and how you can customize this thing. All right, let, let's let's stop Eliza here. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to head over to CPAN, all right, the Comprehensive Pearl Archive Network. All right, that's search.cpan.org. Uh, there's the path up there, tilde j nolan slash chatbot hyphen eliza hyphen 1.04. Actually, there's a 1.06 out there, I noticed when I took a look at this, uh, which was, uh, you know, uh, probably so that it'll compile properly on modern versions of Perl uh, from October 2015, which isn't to say that the program has changed a lot from its original incarnation from way back in the day. So what you're going to do is you're going to download a copy of this thing, and uh, you're going to wind up with a uh, chatbot Eliza tar.gz file. All right, so let's uh, see what we do with that file. We'll minimize that, and uh, we'll go into here. And, and now we're going to open up our console prompt or, you know, your terminal window, whatever you want to call it. And I've created a directory here called My AI, all right, where the chatbot Eliza file has been downloaded. So I'm going to extract that, tar-xzvf chatbot Eliza which expands all this, uh, you know, all these lovely CGI files. Ooh, we've got Deutsch in here as well. I don't speak Deutsch, so we're going to stick to English, all right? Anyway, so let's go into that folder, and um, you'll see all the source files and all the information that you have here. This is actually pretty easy to put together. What you do is you type Perl, make file, dot PL, hit enter, looks good, generating blah, blah, blah. We type make. And it creates this thing, and we go sudo make install so that we've got this available uh, to the rest of the system. There we go. So now, if you go into the folder called examples, you're going to see a file called simple. Okay, you can actually just execute that dot s i m p l e, and uh, there you go. This is where we started just a few minutes ago. And uh, please tell me what's bothering you. Nothing. Not sure I understand it fully. <laughs> let's let's not start that again, okay? Not for the moment. All right. All right. So if we want to make some changes here, the very first place you're going to look at is the simple file. So we go vi simple, and uh, no, we're not starting a vi versus emacs battle here. It's not happening today. Use chatbot Eliza. Her name is Liz. So let's say that we actually want to change it to Eliza here. Okay, so we can change Liz to Eliza. And uh, now if we do dot simple, uh, you see that your therapist's name is Eliza. And of course, you can call your therapist whatever you like, whatever it is that happens to work for you. If you happen to have an actual therapist somewhere, you know, and uh, you want to give your, you know, your therapist name. Uh, what's a good therapist? Sigmund. Sigmund is a good therapist name. I think that might actually catch on. Okay. All right. So let's do this one more time. So we go dot simple. And there you go. Your therapist name is Sigmund. I like that. Okay. That's good. All right. So what else can we do besides that? Let's take another look. I'm going to do control C. All right, now if you take a look here, you're going to see that there's a file called doctor.txt. In fact, if you, this is actually pretty simple stuff. If you go more doctor.txt, you're going to see that there are all sorts of words that it looks for and, um, you know, keywords and how it can actually respond to the various keywords and so forth. So there, there are all sorts of things. Uh, all the things that Eliza or Liz or Sigmund says is located here. So let's say that I wanted to change things around a little bit. I wanted to make my own version. Let's try this. I'll go cp doc doctor.txt and I'm going to call this one, I don't know, mywords.txt. All right, so I'm calling it mywords.txt and I'm going to go into mywords.txt and um, uh, let me see and uh, we can we can start to change. Please tell me what is your problem, okay? So these are the initial things that it can say, okay? How do you do? Please tell me what your problem is. Uh, um, I am your new computer overlord. Tell me what is bothering you. Whoops, you puny human. All right, and uh, let me see. Maybe we should channel a little bit of uh, Bender. We could channel a little bit of Bender and say, kill all humans. Well, not today. What do you want? All right. 
And uh, please tell me what's bothering you. Uh, so what can we make that? Uh, D. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Psychiatric help. Uh, insert your five cents. And uh, D. Uh, go away. I am busy. All right. So you can see that I've got all these new phrases that I put in. These are the initial opening, just starting phrases, okay? You could go in and you could modify this whole thing. In fact, I'll tell you that once upon a time back in my TRS 80 days, I actually created a version of this which basically just insulted you the entire time. I think, I think I'm well on my way with this one. So let's just write that out, okay? So let's clear that out. And uh, we're going to go into uh, simple, whoops, we're going to go into simple again one more time, okay? And in addition to dollar chatbot here, uh, we've got uh, new chatbot Eliza. I'm going to modify this just slightly, okay? If you want, this is actually sort of kind of in the documentation, okay? All right, so um, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go to Eliza here, and uh, I'm going to open a round bracket, and I'm going to say um, uh, name uh, equals uh, Sigmund. So there's my name equals Sigmund, and at the end of that, I'm just going to change that to a comma because we're not done yet. And uh, I'm also going to say script file. Whoops, S-C-R-I-P-T. F-I-L-E, um, and uh, script file is, uh, let me see, mywords.txt. Uh, see, I, I, don't, I don't write, I don't, I, don't, I don't computer type well when there are people looking over my shoulder. It's really difficult. No, I'm just kidding. Well, maybe not, maybe not really. Yes, and I know, I know there's a bug already in what I've done here, but I'll, I'll try to fix it before I actually execute. Hey, first of all, let's, uh, let's make this look a little bit prettier. Um, and um, yes, I know there's the error right there. Okay. All right. All right. So now I've got name equals Sigmund because he's going to be Sigmund uh, instead of uh, Eliza. And uh, a script file is mywords.txt because I actually want to use my words to do this. Okay. Let's see if this actually works. Dot slash simple. I am your new computer overlord. Tell me what is bothering you, puny human. Ha! I am worried about the AI apocalypse. Do you know anyone else who's worried about the AI apocalypse? Just everyone, huh? Just everyone? There we go. Who, for example, uh, who, for example, the person watching this video is worried. Tell me more about that. I can't. Privacy, don't you know? Uh, don't you know? There we go. Do you really want me to be able to? All right, all right. That's that's enough of that for now. So, as you can see, there are some neat things that we can do with that, and you can make your very own uh, chatbot. Now, just before I leave this thing, just before I leave this thing, okay, I want you to take a look that there's another script in there called Two Bots, okay, and the whole idea is that it's two chatbots talking to each other. In this case, Sally and Harry. Okay, Sally, I'm sure it's not pleasant to be sad. Can you explain what made you sad? And, um, and of course, we can have the two bots chatting back and forth with each other. It's really kind of interesting uh, because you can see basically what happens if you have one Eliza bot talking to yet another Eliza bot. All right? And uh, let's move on to something else, shall we? All right, it's time for a little religious argument. Okay, you ready? Are you ready for this? Religious argument time. Here we go. Vi. Emacs. Vi. Emacs, bye. Emacs, bye. Okay, all right, all right. I'm gonna shut down Vi for the moment. All right, actually, believe it or not, today we're actually gonna talk about Emacs. I, I'm I'm here to talk about Emacs, despite the fact that you know if it comes between an, an argument between uh, you know Emacs and Vi, well, you know what? I'm 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 a Vi guy, all right. You know, I uh, Vi or Vim or Vi improved or however you want to look at it. That's kind of my editor of choice. But since we're talking about artificial intelligence, uh, we're gonna take a look at Emacs. Okay, Emacs, by the way, isn't just an editor. Okay, it's a newsreader, a web browser, a mail reader, all sorts of bizarre, strange things. It's the brainchild of uh, Richard Stallman of the uh, GNU uh, organization. GNU's not Unix, and um, some people just love this thing. I, you know, and. Uh, 
And, you know, and if it drives you crazy at some point working inside Emacs, well, you know what? Uh, you can type escape X to go down to the bottom here and Emacs will come to your rescue if you're starting to go crazy. Just type doctor and lo and behold, I am your psychotherapist. Please describe your problem. Each time you finish talking, type return twice. Hmm. All right. Well, can you help me with my problem? Me with my problem. Return twice. Why do you say I can help you with your problem? I don't know. Um, do you... Here, what do you say? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Return, return twice. Is it because of your plans that you don't know? No, I want to know. I want... Sorry, I want to know which... Whether uh, VI is better than the Emacs. Is better <laughs> than Emacs. <laughs> uh, let's see what that says. Emacs, ha! I would appreciate it <laughs> if you would continue. Hey, wait a minute. I'm starting to think. I'm starting to see a bias here. Maybe your life has something to do with this. <laughs> hmm. Um, uh, can you give me some advice on how to fix this? Is it, is it because to fix this that you came to me? I think I am talking to the wrong person. What makes you believe that? Are you a computer? What do you think? No. Why not? Because. Okay, I'm just going to stop here. This is, this is just getting silly, right? Because. Uh, enter the matrix earlier you said to fix this goodbye all right there you go anyway so <laughs> <laughs> my secretary will send you a bill well there you go anyway as much fun as this is uh, it won't take you long to figure out that it's not all that much different from Eliza in the sense that it is somewhat limited uh, the advantage of course is that if you're a an Emacs user while you're busy coding the doctor is always in so if you need help there he is you know or she or I'm not entirely sure is Emacs uh, is, is this does Emacs have a um, Okay, we're, we're not, we're not going to go into that argument today. And that's it for today on Cooking with Linux. I hope you enjoyed this little tour of artificial intelligence on the Linux desktop. And um, we'll come back later when I finished uh, building my, um, my intelligent assistant off uh, on the Raspberry Pi. All right. Talk to you later. And uh, bon appétit et à votre santé. Enjoy the rest of your day.